You're listening to Olivia's Book Club, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Olivia's Book Club. And this is the podcast, still your host, Olivia Fierro. And we are finally, after so long, such a painful separation. We're checking in with Margaret for a big old fat moment with Margaret to recap some of what she's been reading over the last month plus or so, Mm -hmm. almost quarter. Um, Margaret, we should say for those who have been with us for the long haul, you are now on a polar opposite schedule as we used to be. (laughs) So (laughs) so getting our um, paths to cross has been a challenge, but now I get to give you my full concentration and we came up with you, I should say, came up with a really good way to kind of recap what you have been reading and where you are on your recommendations. And we're kind of giving everything an emoji. Yes. Well, you know, it's kind of hard when you, you know, when you read so many books and people want a quick and dirty recommendation. And I am very, I'm very thankful that I have some coworkers at my now job that also are big on reading and every now and then they'll be like, okay, I, I recommended this book. What do you think? Really quick. And I do the same thing. I recommended this book. What did you think? Really quick. So that's what led me into this emoji idea, like a quick and dirty response. You ready? Love it. Okay. So I know. So we're not, we don't have any firm rating system. Like it's possibly that there could be, you know, 10 thumbs up emojis if you love something so much. We're just capturing your emotion. I just figured I only have two thumbs. So past two thumbs would be. You're right. It makes no sense. Yeah, it's like, you know, Siskel and Ebert. Toes, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm with you You completely. So, and and my thing is like, some of these are are not going to get thumbs up. And that's okay. But we know. that's okay. Yes, and we know that like, you know, we all have our authors that we love. We also have genres we really prefer. We also have, you know, catch you in a moment, right? You might be yeah. really thrilled about a book that it's all relative, right? It's all what you think, your taste, your parameters, your setting, those things impact it. Me? Yes. Most of these books are through audio on my 40 minute drive in and 40 minute drive out. To work. Okay. Yes. So, bear in mind, okay. Sometimes maybe dealing with people who don't know how to merge on Pima Road oh. off the 101, we can mm-hmm. get into that a whole other time. That is the right of my existence. Anyway, it was a very <laughs> neat um, shout out for um, Scottsdale PD. If you're listening, um, that would be a great place to watch people not follow the yield sign. Cool. Whoa. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You want to give some tickets? That's a great place to do it. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. I can go on a rant later, I guess. Okay. One of our most recent reads, okay. and I know you you spoke to her, Hester by Laura Lico Albanese. Historical fiction, has a little bit of spooky vibes, Salem Witch Trials. You know, it's kind of a great read to be reading in October. I kind of gave historical fiction a break. I did this as a thumbs up. Yes. What did you think? I would give this two thumbs up. Two thumbs I really, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I also listened to it on audio and I found the narrator to be fantastic. I love a narrator with a with a, an accent and that kind of lyrical sort of, she's Scottish, but it, you know, to me sounds almost like that soft Irish lilt. And I thought it was... I just really got swept up in it. And I thought it was super creative and I enjoyed the story start to finish. I think with the enjoyment of the audiobook comes with it, the a big premise of the book, and they even talk about it before the, the novel uh-huh. starts, is this, um, I forget what it's called, but it's the, the idea yeah. that there are people that have the ability to see and feel senses in two different ways. So for instance, a word has a color association. 
actually seen a lot of this on TikTok where someone will say, you know, Joe, what is what does the word grapefruit mean to you? And they like, what are the colors? What do you, what does it sound like or taste like or whatever? And have those abilities. And so what the main character has here is the ability or somewhat like you hear her discuss uh, words being in color. And I yeah. think that really helps. And she's a seamstress, of course. Of course. Why would that be? Of course. She's a seamstress, period. She using the color and her needle and thread moments, like it really weaves the story. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Uh, that I feel like it really brings in the vibrancy of the story. It yes. really highlights and colorizes it. And I think it does a very good job of also yeah. connecting another historical person into the context of the story, which I kind of went, oh, I didn't expect him to be there. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, very cool. I mean, re- reference to the Scarlet Letter. I mean, this, this, I, I mm-hmm. talk about at length with, with the author. So it also, this is something that, like, for example, Billie Eilish says that she has or has been identified to have, where you're kind of seeing everything visually. So I thought it was a very clever take on sort of understanding what, how women could in another generation be called evil or witches or whatever, when really you have a gift or a condition yeah. that is unique in some way. So um, yeah, that's a two thumbs up for me. Okay, so Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey, The Office BFFs? Yes. So they haven't heard of this. What? I requested it. And of course, I know The Office, but is this as new? Yeah, it came out over the summer, I believe. And I saw it on NetGalley, shout out. And I got rejected for it. And considering I'm one of those people that The Office is my comfort show, like I, I'm not kidding when I say it runs for eight hours straight while I sleep. I'm not, that's not an exaggeration that may be sad, but it's. Doctors don't recommend that. They don't. But the thing is, is that I have seen it so many times that it's not keeping me awake. I sleep all the way through it. And the nice thing is, you know, it's not a nice thing, but having been on the 2.30 AM schedule and living where I do, I, you know, I hear a lot of things. You can hear the traffic in the background right now. That's very hard to sleep through. So what I would do is I would train myself to listen to something like the office, Parks and Rec, things I've seen a million times over that would happily drown out everything else. It's white noise. It's familiar. Yeah. It's white noise for me. There is also just a white noise app on your phone. I mean, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> but what's funny Which is my- I cannot sleep without. I cannot sleep without. Oh, it's it's kind of hilarious how far I've gotten into this, but I sometimes I'll listen to nature sound. Sure, sure, sure. My friend actually showed me on the Calm app, there's the office. It's just office noises like really? typing, 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 typing and- and fax machines, coffee machines. That's interesting phone calls, things like that. I haven't used that yet, but maybe I'll dive. Yeah. Anyway, most of us want to calm down away from the office, but yeah. Okay. So this one, you give a thumbs up. I give thumbs up. I mean, it's, it's really, um, an offshoot of, they have a podcast called office ladies where the two of them as best friends talk, uh, um, they go episode by episode. And so this is kind of a mashup of those things with photos and anecdotes and there are some people that um show up like rain oh. wilson has some things that are read um a couple different of the actors pop in and out and it's really oh, fun yeah. so yeah okay. it's kind of like the podcast but yeah book so it gets a thumbs up perfect okay alice feeney this is a little bit of an older read but it was a recommendation from a coworker based okay. on, oh, and she runs the wine store. So we listened to her. Thank you. Oh, okay. So she had suggested this book and it was one that has been on my TBR for Forever. so yeah. long. Finally got into it and I loved it. Big thumbs up, big, Damn. big thumbs up. I have a problem with the cover. Okay. But, Cause it, let me, let me bring you into the cover. The cover is, a snowy bank 
very, very snowy, woodsy area and a little chapel, very, very small. Great. I think the chapel should have been more prevalent and it should have been more inside because like the snow, sure, sure, was big. It's a part of it, but it makes, it made me think of um, the hunting party by Lucy Foley. If you read that, yeah. where they're all mm-hmm. inside and it took me there when it shouldn't have. It's, it's way deeper than that. And the storyline is that this woman um, is married to a man who has facial blindness. So we can uh-huh. see the outlines and everything. He just yeah. can't fix your face. And so, um, but he is an, he's a screenplay writer and really he's adapting a, a very well novelist, adapting his, his novels into movies okay. and um, talking about like this wife is writing letters to him every year on their anniversary, talking about like where they are in their lives. And then they're on this like retreat and, and they on a little getaway to this chapel that's now like an Airbnb mm-hmm. and things start to go haywire. Mm-hmm. Okay. So did you read Daisy Darker? I did not. Okay. So not I'm just yet. curious how it, how it measures up. You know, that one I have uh, in my net galley list mm-hmm. of 250 books. I'm really sorry. To net galley. Um, I haven't read that one yet. I really enjoyed it, but it was my first time reading Alice Feeney. So mm-hmm. of course it has, it had, I thought immediately of Lucy Foley and especially like uh, the wedding or the guest list um, where you're in a remote space and kind of the elements are keeping people isolated and vulnerable and the tensions are high, but I thought it was very creative and yeah. I really enjoyed that book. So I'm definitely down to read more of her books and go into the back catalog. I'm thankful that this one was not, I mean, there is some isolation, but that is not the the main drive the of the story. So that's why I really appreciated it because, it, again, um, Shana Le Pe- Sherry LaPena, yes. who mm-hmm. does a lot of isolation thing. Yeah. It's great, but it can become monotonous, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So this, this is not that. And then just when you think you understand what's happening, it twists. Yeah, oh. I like that. Oh, wow. That's not. Okay. And then at the very end, there's another dig. So Ooh, love that. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Okay. This one's going to bum you out. And, I, and I'm sorry to you. Oh, this is so high on my TBR list right now. This is one of my selections out of my own personal TBR stack that the book club voted on, but it didn't make the cut. I, I think, well, wasn't Lessons in Chemistry the one that won out? Was it Lessons in Chemistry yes. that went out? Or was Lessons it Alice in Finley? Chemistry? lessons in chemistry and then a close second in votes was the alex finley so we just went boom boom yeah i'm gonna tell you to skip this one for book club i this is um more than you'll ever know by kate gutierrez it's women's fiction it's a little bit suspense a little bit not i it i was just so underwhelmed really essentially it's about a woman who her husband is in jail for murdering her other husband. She apparently had two husbands. Yes. And one killed the other. Mm-hmm. Supposedly. Well, he's been, the original husband is convicted of killing the second husband. Mm-hmm. And this journalist, uh, you know, always a, a spicy, snappy little journalist trying to, something to prove. She reaches out to the woman in the story and says, hey, everybody else keeps telling a story that's not your story. Why don't you tell me your story and I'll tell your side of it. And and that old con. (laughs) Yeah, that old chestnut. Um, And of course her her kids, the, the kids are like, don't trust her. She's just like every other journalist, whatever. I just, I was really hoping for a bigger anything okay it's kind of like uh the meme from the incredibles and mr incredible saying what are you what are you waiting for and the kid goes i don't know something amazing i guess yeah i was waiting for that okay all right all right i'd um, say all right 
you read it, yes. you judge, you yes. decide. I yes. just thought it was meh. Meh. Thumbs down. So I, yeah. And that's the, that's the, this emoji. Yeah. That's the meh. meh. The yeah. Indifferent. Okay. Indifferent. Uh, but yes. what did get two thumbs up two for thumbs. you, which we've talked and had the author on the podcast already, is Bonnie Garmis and Lessons in Chemistry. Yes, I I loved this book. I, of course, got it well after the book club had talked about it and read it. But, you know, when you're, you're at the mercy of the library, of the library, you know, you just got to do what you got to do. So I read it right after but I really enjoyed it. And I kind of like that I, I didn't have, I wasn't participating in the book club discussion before I read it because I'm, I got to experience it all on my own. And when you, you think that it's really going to be a bigger deep dive into her being a presenter on TV, it really doesn't get that deep for a long, long time. And so it's just kind of the ideas of, feminism in in this particular era and the the life and times of a woman who isn't married but has a child and you know all the fun things that go with that and why she even is led into the world of tv as being a chemist in a time where chemistry is not a woman's game seriously and is sort of the bur- the burden slash opportunity of her being attractive is that she gets thrust into something that is completely counter to what yeah. her her soul and spirit would drive her to to be doing. So yeah, I I, lo- I I enjoy that book so much. I thought it was so emotional and surprisingly funny and deep. And um, we just actually book clubbed this for my neighborhood book club. Oh. And so uh, surprisingly, that was the first group that I had really heard where people were very like, eh, about the book. So I'm like, wait a second. Did you guys really read it though? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, moms, I'm calling you out. Some of them were very put off by the dog and all of his thoughts, which I just found to be a very charming element to the storytelling. I thought that was so charming. I loved, I loved his perspective because he's like the omniscient, see all, know all, and wishes that he could do more to fix things. Like, and you can't know, do anything. Yeah. And also like the emotional gravity of him feeling like he fell down on the job and when he was supposed to be watching, you know, her, her, her man. And so I just, I I thought it was really clever and sweet and and I, it enhanced the book for me, but for some, it was a a takeaway. I mean, I guess it's similar to like anxious people. A lot of, a lot of readers didn't enjoy the each uh, chapter starting kind of the exact same way and you're like yes. you get it and at first it's yes. off-putting but with a dog and having a dog thoughts like that's the first time I've experienced totally. that, to that level. and a dog especially this dog is a huge part of the family oh yeah oh yeah so he's, he's hard and soul. He get? Uh, all I can say is I cannot wait to see the show which is going to be on apple plus and I sure hope that they figure out how to Show that dog with goggles in the converted kitchen turned into a laboratory because I need that scene. Like I need to lay my eyes on that scene. And I think it would be like the most amazing thing in the world. It'll be done. And it'll be done well, I hope. So I'll have to look into that show. All of it. All of it. I need it all. Okay. Lessons in Cambridge. Okay. The family remains. And I've got this downstairs and I have not read this yet. And you know, we love Lisa Jewell. Love Lisa Jewell. I adore Lisa Joel and um, the night she disappeared was one of my favorites. Yeah. So that was just before this one. Mm-hmm. And I really liked the family upstairs, which is yes. the first of this book. It, the family which was the first time I had read her. That was my introduction. to That her. was my first introduction to her as well. And I really enjoyed it. This is just, this is a follow-up. And so mm-hmm. You know, I also should have probably revisited the storyline of the first. It took me a minute to get back into it. I think there were a lot of pieces here that in this book that I really enjoyed. But I think my the, the biggest piece that I enjoyed was um, the main female character, her ex-husband, mm-hmm. his new wife. 
okay. her her perspective of what was going on. Remember, his name's Marco. The uh, Marco is the son, actually, the their kid. Anyway, his bad crap, like better term. Sorry, he is just a not a good person, and mm-hmm. it's the new wife's perspective of them getting together or finding out about uh, okay. the story. And then there's also a piece where it's the investigator in the whole um, family's past in the 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. Yeah. That it's also his, there's an outlook from him. So two of the four uh, percep- uh, perspectives mm-hmm. I enjoyed. The other two mm-hmm. of the actual family Mm-hmm. brother and sister not into it so this kind of meh yeah. from mm-hmm. yeah. well and sometimes you you think uh, you'll hear a lot of these authors say like oh a, a particular character or something kind of like was still in my mind and so maybe it's more successful when that character is just woven into a completely different story or you know has that kind of like hop through like a taylor jenkins read or you know even mm-hmm. i think sally hepworth does that sometimes um versus revisiting the whole like yeah. versus a part two, especially with as many years in between. I just, I don't, I don't remember where that book left off. I remember enjoying it. I remember some elements about the story, but I didn't feel like I was left to hang in and I needed to revisit it. But And, and that's kind of where it picks up where you're like, these loose ends aren't that loose. Nece- aren't that loose. Yeah. yeah. They were driving me crazy. <laughs> They're just different perspectives, which is great, uh-huh. but, but it okay. just wasn't, it wasn't the follow-up I wanted and that's okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. You're also giving, so you're really like, you're really giving the mess <laughs> to some of your very favorite I authors, know. including Riley, Riley Sager. Sager. Don't tell him. <laughs> I love him. You know, I love him. And I, I know, know he's, he's talked so about great. the house across the lake. It just, it got a little wonky for me. Once we, once we got into like this woman, it's, it's very much like what lies beneath to me. And like, um, uh, what is that? Alex Flynn, Flynn, Finn, shoot. The woman in the window. Oh, yes. Yes. Is that the uh, that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, woman in the Window, A.J. Flynn. A.J. Flynn, thank you. Um, it is very much like that, where you're like seeing something else happen across the street, yes. across it's, the lake. It's, 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 yeah, it's Rear Window. And then, yes, and then you're getting involved in other people's business. It's what eventually is discussed as what is happening. Then I went, Riley, mm-hmm. Mr. Sager. <laughs> If that is your real name, which in fact it is not. It's not. Uh, <laughs> we, we can, mm, it's just not my favorite of his. It just okay. didn't be yeah. there. Right. And you've loved, and, and you know what that is? I also think that's sort of the jeopardy uh, for an author when a reader really loves their previous work, like loves, loves, loves. So you have loved and said like, oh my gosh, I will read everything in Riley Sager. I love, love, love. So then your expectations are here and maybe the book is coming in here and it's not bad by any means and still enjoyable and all of that, but it's not, which is how I felt when I read the Carrie Soto is back, Taylor Jenkins read. You know, it's like I was waiting, I'm waiting for like something that's so amazing, that's so going to like captivate me and it's all I'm going to be thinking about. And in reality, I was like, I don't dislike her, but I kind of over it already and it's like so much tennis and you know so it's just I think there's a there's such a burden when somebody has written some of your favorite books that you know yeah it's bound to happen I mean yes what is this his sixth book I've read uh, Mm six or seventh I've read them all Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's bound to happen that I it's not that I hated it I just was like yeah Mm -hmm. could have been better yeah you weren't on Kinsey Noodle. So you gave it the map. Okay. I got to say, I'm really surprised that you're giving a thumbs down to this next one, which by the way, I enjoyed so much that I passed it on to my husband and he just finished it last night. 
And he's been like, he's usually a very good reader, but he's been a very slow reader lately because he's been been just busy and whatever's. But um, The Island, Adrian McKinty. And I loved this book. It's headed <laughs> to Hulu and that too. <laughs> I'm surprised you liked it, honestly. I And I love The Chain. I thought The Chain was great. So I didn't read that. Yeah, maybe don't. It's about kids way deeper okay. than this. Don't do it. It'll just freak yourself out as a parent. I, I just couldn't. It just didn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. I really think the premise, you know, the whole idea is that these Americans, they're in Australia, they make some bad decisions. They go on essentially to an island that is unincorporated and they kind of do whatever they want. And, you know, an accidental death happens and then they're being hunted the whole time. And then once you get into it, it twists on you. And and for me, the twist wasn't like, oh my God. It was more like, now you're just trying to confuse me. And mm-hmm. confusing, like I'm being confused. It's like, this doesn't make any sense. Confusion to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, and then just to really make it fun, there's another twist. And you're like, okay, that you could have dealt without that twist. That doesn't even like, there was no good setup for that. I felt uh-huh. like it just was disjointed. That final twist just was kind of brought out of thin air. And I went, Adrian McKinty. That <laughs> where was the build up in that. And I understand there's very slight nuances based on the character that it involves yeah. and you could maybe see it. Sure. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't a strong enough build for me that it mm-hmm. that the the view was worth the climb. Okay. Oh, okay. That, that, that's a good way to phrase it. Yeah. I, I am very excited to see how this is translated into a series just because I feel like also the the rugged terrain and this sort of like, oh my God, nobody's out here to help me kind of thing is going to be, I'll be, I'll be excited. I mean, it feels like it could, it could play out in a good five, six episode, whatever. So I'll it, it would watch. need to be limited series and then just leave it yes. at that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, unless Definitely. yeah, it it just didn't hit the mark for me, and I mm-hmm. would have, I would like to have that time back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, um, but what? Oh no! Oh my gosh! An a meh also. <laughs> well, this, this, I'm being um, very you. hard. Generally, you're very generous with your anybody off of a Bravo show. I love, I love Garcelle and I love this book. I love is it, Garcelle. Is it a giant thumbs up for Love Me As I Am? No, it's a, it's a, it's a, eh. I think it is funny because she does a little bit of name dropping and God love her for it. I really did like this book, but is it going to be one that I recommend to everybody? No. And that's what I went off oh. like with my emoji. Yeah. Listen, we love a Garcelle. We love her. We love our Bravo celebrities. But out of all of them, none of their books, not one of them has been like, I'm going to recommend this to every single person. No, no, no. It, it, it's a very niche audience. I mean, and it's only a very devoted viewer is interested in in reading or listening to an audiobook from one of these ladies. And that's and that was where I was coming from with the meh. Emoji mm-hmm. was I'm not gonna recommend it to most people unless mm-hmm. you unless you were very niche like her in early acting yeah. like our early acting have any reason to think about her relationship with Jamie Fox I mean randomly yeah uh-huh. or watch the last few seasons of Beverly Hills Housewives where she is an active part then it's really only, it's really only going to like 4% of the people that I interact with about books. They're like, who's So that's why I got the myth. If you're big on Bravo, if you're big on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I say, absolutely go for it. You'll love it. Audio book is the best. Mm -hmm. Otherwise. I enjoy her testimonials so much because she has some great zares, like where she's like, mm-hmm. you know, like, please Google me. Like, you know, like, I just like, I love her confidence. 
So of the many people who have had books and like, oh my gosh, I have not listened to many of them except for I did listen to Dorinda's and I thought it was really, really. Um, but I, I, she I is, have it. but I would, I wouldn't mind spending extra time with, but you know, I'm not rushing out to, to put this on my list. Okay. Yeah. So you went retro on one for the last couple of months that you've been reading, which was the Paris apartment by Lucy Foley. It did not, as the kids say, it did not slap. So for me. <laughs> this was a D and F for me kind of accident. Yes. So accidentally, and I remember specifically that I was trying to tell Tony about the beauty of the audiobook, and we were driving, we were driving to Utah or somewhere. We were driving on vacation, just the two of us. And I said, let me get this book and then we'll start listening to, I know you're going to like it. And then we found ourselves to be kind of, and I was like, let me switch back to music. And then I just never switched. Yeah. Um, I have a book like that that's hovering mm-hmm. at 50% read on my mm-hmm. Kindle. And it's mm-hmm. been that way for seven months. Wow. This would be that if I hadn't yeah. waited and waited and waited and then waited longer and then more for that audiobook to come through from the library. I waited so long. I clogged up my holds for this darn book. The Paris apartment is just so lackluster. Okay. Yes. The guest book. Guest I book. love that book. Guest list. Not the guest, the guest I mean, list. Same it was great. Loved it. Hunting party. Meh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. This was a, oh gosh, what? I wasted okay. my time with this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, I appreciate a, a sultry backstory that you eventually get into, but it's just so not it's just so boring. That sounds terrible, mm-hmm. but listen, it's a, there's some secret society yeah. stuff happening and it's dumb. It's not even worth it. This is the first yeah. time I've been like outwardly not impressed yes. with a big book like uh-huh. this. Yeah. Very so slow. Fair. At least where I was, I was like, this is a very slow roll. And I just, it was, it certainly was not the one to try to hook my husband on like, hey, audiobooks can be like your best friend when you're traveling and whatever. It was not, that that was not happening. Not keeping you awake. No. When you're driving long distances without seeing anything in sight. Yeah. So just in case that we feared that our dear Margaret had lost her love for books, <laughs> had lost her little spark, her, her um, joyful ways, We find finally a hug emoji. Hug emoji, which is such a weird emoji altogether. Um, The Royals Next Door by Karina Halley. Would I say this is like the best rom-com I've ever read? Absolutely not. Not at all. But I found it so charming. It was cute. The premise is kind of like if um, Will and Kate and less Will and Kate, more Harry and Meghan. If Harry and Meghan, specifically Harry and Meghan, just decided to move in next door, like let's say like you have a compound and the main house is the one that they're moving into and you're kind of in their uh, side quarters, the, the, the former servant quarters. And you are now part of each other's lives. And then here comes the sultry bodyguard who's tough and no one lo- like he's never loved before. And yeah. it's just, it's just so charming. And it was a good breakup of the monotonous, terrible yes. thriller su- suspense novels. I was really not enjoying. So, so I have really changed my tone. Well, so I, I used to be like, as you know, like really like romance. No, but the rom-com is essentially what I first would have called chick lit, right? Like, yeah. I and it's so charming and enjoyable and escapist and yeah. cute and warm and silly and all of those things. And sometimes that is the most valuable book that you can pick up, especially to break up a series yeah. of books that are of the of similar genres. And so I have had really a new appreciation and respect for like the well-done rom-com is absolutely delightful 
And even if people don't think that that's their genre, they should give it a go because when they're, you know, if you're in a mood or something, I mean, it really is that light kind of effervescence tonic that you need sometimes like as an antidote for whatever's going on in life. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. It's funny because you say you would have personified it as or genreized it as chiclet. Yes. I stopped calling things chiclet or romance because when I am maybe talking to a guy about like what I just, oh, I right. just read this book. It's called The Royals Next Door. It's a, it's a, it's chiclet. They automatically are like, wow. Or yeah. if you say romance, you go, like 50 shades. No, no, <laughs> there are no sex scenes. Not porn. I said romance. No. <laughs> okay. But also 50 shades of gray is not porn. It's erotic fiction. I'm sorry. It's erotic fiction. Well, no, but no, but I say this because people say it's porn and you're like, there are no photos. Yeah. No, it so, can't be. So it's that erotic. Porn- Minds. That means that porn's living in your mind. If you can see it, that visual. You can see it. That actor, that storyteller is doing a really good job of bringing you into the story. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> it's not so, it's not so easy, but yeah. you're there. But- and let me give a little like, um, Hey, if somebody missed it, we did many, 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 many months ago or weeks ago, did, um, an interview with a bookseller at changing hands. That's one of the yeah. podcasts recommending romance novels and rom-coms to guys and how it's a really fun, how it's just a super enjoyable genre. Some of them are being written for more for a men's perspective too, but that it's also like a clever way to have insight into how women perceive dating and kind of what they're looking for and what drives them crazy. Both Hello. Good and- yeah. My name is Margaret Stewart. And if you've ever dated me or ever would like to, this would be a really good thing to do. I think many of the men that I've dated don't understand that the the comings and goings of the the female brain. And And I think these these books give that insight. Yes. They do to to what is like stresses us out that might seem silly or, you know, whatever, but that builds up just to the little nuances of what makes people happy or what's irritating or the pressures or also like the inner dialogue that's going on in various circumstances that can be, you know, obstructive. Did you Uh, read Catherine Center's The Bodyguard, her most recent one? I haven't read that one yet. I haven't. I'm working on it. I'm also... In in midst of soulmate equation, Christina Lauren, oh, yes. I'm I'm all over the map right now. I've got yes. so many that I'm like tinkering with. Yeah, I will say, you tell me what you say about Bodyguard, and I'll tell you something else I got into. You tell me first. Um, the Bodyguard, just everything that you said that you enjoyed about this were the words that I would describe that. Like just charming. It was funny and full of life and humorous and. Our heroine is just like a badass chick who is just like, it was, it was everything I like in a character that you're completely rooting for. She doesn't do anything dumb. That's annoying. You know, Mm -hmm. she doesn't put herself in any circumstances for like, girl, you made, you know, brought this on yourself. No, she's just, she's just cool and and complex. And um, I, I just, it was adorable and charming and really, really fun. Wow, that sounded like you were reading a description about me. And I yes. appreciate that. <laughs> You're kidding. welcome. That's why I said you must read it because you will just uh, see yourself in these pages. And like, maybe you will get some sort of assignment that puts you on a ranch with a movie star. I don't know. Oh, but that happens in the book. It's got to be possible. You know, my my position at my job opens me up to many things. And it's hilarious. You say that because we have a part of our property called the ranch. Oh my. So the possibilities um, are limitless. Oh, I'm just so excited for that for me, but also Catherine center is so charming in her own right. And so totally. she, you know, write what you know, babe, and she's doing it. Yeah. Love her. Yeah. And she even said that when she pitched this, when she was like sorting out the story and she knew that the, her, her, the, the female character, the protagonist is the bodyguard and she's tiny and she's 
doesn't look like she would be a bodyguard. So she, th therefore, that's kind of a strategic advantage as well. Um, and then she was going to have this assignment, of course, was going to be like a hot, attractive guy. And so she was coming up with different careers and somebody in tech or somebody in oil or business or whatever. And she said, I, I mean, or it could just be like a hot, gorgeous movie star hunk, or is that just like too fun? And it was during COVID and her editor is like, there's no such thing as too fun. Like give it to us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, especially in that time. So I'm, I'm thankful. And I, I do have the, the book. I just haven't gotten into it yet, but at a very weird, it's very rare right now that I am watching movies. I don't seem to have the, the attention for it. I am very big on something is playing and I'm doing this, oh, mm -hmm. which is already not good in itself. A lot of background TV that I'm listening, but I don't have to watch it, right? I will say, very late at night, I was snooping through Hoopla. Shout out to the library once again. Do you use Hoopla? Hoopla is another, it's like Libby. Okay. But it doesn't have the same amount. And it's a lot of audiobooks as well as regular okay. books, cool. but a lot uh -huh. of movies, movies and TV shows. So I was twiddling through, I think it was like 1130 at night. And here is, I see the hating game movie by Sally Thorne. You know, that cute little novel that was turned into a movie, but came out in the time where movies were not going to theaters. Yes. And so I kind of forgot about it. I mean, I didn't forget about it, but I just forgot to like go look for it. And there it was. And I love Lucy Hale. Um, uh -huh. My new haircut was inspired by her oh, doing yes. as great of a job so as her. Uh -huh. But she is um, an executive producer on that movie. And I think they did a really good job with it. I really, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was very mindless. Yeah, that's my list. Yeah, it's very mindless. Like, don't expect it to be like a yeah. black or rom com. Not, it's not right. that. I will say, I was really surprised by some of the language used. Uh -huh. A lot of times, rom coms that do have sexual scenes, they mm -hmm. don't really say directly what they want to say or what yeah. would be said in a normal life. Mm -hmm. Part of the lighting. The lighting just changed in here thanks to my jalapeno plant light going off. It's plant life for you. Uh, <laughs> they got a little darker in here. But I was back to what I was saying is that there was like a line that really kind of caught me off guard. I was like, oh, I haven't heard that in a rom com. Oh, before. but wow. It felt, but it felt more realistic. Even when yeah. it's not realistic, it felt more to the to the idea of this okay. would, this could happen and this yeah. could be so, so yeah. I enjoyed that. Cool. Um, I also stumbled upon on Hulu, um, Tell Me Lies, which is Cara, uh, Carola Levering, who oh, we yeah. talked to from Can't Look Away, yes. which was her most recent book. Um, but her previous book, Tell Me Lies, is a series on Hulu and it's pretty saucy. And so it's, I enjoy it, um, but I have to, it's like the kind of show that I'm like remembering to go back to. And so I'm watching, you know, if I'm doing something in the kitchen, but then I have to absolutely stop it if Nate's coming into the room. So, oh, yeah. so, but you could watch it at your leisure and it's, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, unless I'm trying to upset my jalapeno plant, no one in here is going to tell me or I'm not pausing it for anyone. I can yes. blast yeah. it. You, you can <laughs> let those those scenes uh, play out fully. Okay, very last, last yeah. but certainly not least is the one book that you gave both a thumbs up emoji and the crying emoji to and scene. Yes. I mean, that's that's pretty, I think that's pretty spot on. Um, so the 100 years of Lenny and Margot by Marianne Cronin, 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 listen, 
Another book club read I didn't get to because of the library. Everybody wanted to read it. I didn't get to it in time. And I should, it's another one of those books. You've heard me say it before. I should have read the premise. And I didn't. And I dove right into it and went, You have got to learn from this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've done this to myself like eight times this year, at least. Mm -hmm. But I also think that I, I think I draw better emotional ties to those stories because I can relate to them. And, you know, um, the passing of time and of someone's life between um, somebody who is young and sick and someone who is old and sick and the people they meet along the way and the, in toward the ends of their, their lives. Um, it, it got me obviously, but it was so beautiful. And um, Lenny's the young girl. Yes. And Margot's the older one, um, yes. of course. And Lenny's Lenny's personality is just so quirky, but young and sweet. And, you know, you see so much vibrancy and, and life within her, although she's so sick and toward the end of her life. And it's just her little, her friendship that she makes with Margot, who's also not, you know, doing so hot. And, feeling great in her life. Um, they make this beautiful friendship and decide between the two of them, they have 100 years. So they're going to make 100 paintings yeah. and it's in their, in their, um, therapy art class. And it's just so beautiful and so damn sad. The oh same my gosh. If you don't cry during this book, you have a zero soul. It is a, one of the most beautiful friendships and special relationships. And then the fact that it's so, so much sadness, but there was so much humor throughout it, which yeah. is just that very real balance uh, of life. And these, um, it is, it is. And one thing that I, I marveled about is looking because this was her, her debut novel, by the way. I mean, like, wow. Hey. And I sort of was assuming she was coming from the older woman's perspective that the writer had more life, you know, I mean, it was, I just felt like there was so much depth there and so much understanding of kind of loss and, and, and the ups and downs of, of humanity and, and just everything that we experience on this planet. And it was very young. I mean, the author is young. And I remember reaching out to the publicist to see if she would be doing any, any more press or could participate in our book club. And she was having a baby. So, I mean, she was like young and it's like, a little busy. Well, I, the the gift the gift of her ability to create those characters and make them us love them both so much and grow with them so much I was just thought was out of this world. I think there was also many perspectives that you know Margot's Margot's life isn't exactly you know straight line. Mm -hmm. and it, it was really charming to hear that, and also the. Lenny's relationship with the hospital priest and oh, she's going into the yeah, chapel and going good friend. Yep. well yeah and just you know questioning him and he's so good humored that he's like well you know just nothing comes without doubt and I love mm -hmm. hearing you come by and just like these sweet little friendships that came along in such a sad time it, you mm -hmm. know it draws on personal experience and especially in, in my last, in the last year for me that I, I, I developed a very close relationship with my sister's best friend mm -hmm. and they, she and her sister, who we all went to high school together, the four of us, um, they kind of took me in as their little sister. And so it, it, it's so beautiful to, and very sad at the same time, but you know, with every loss, there's also a, a little bit of hope and a silver mm -hmm. lining that, the, you know, life does move on. It sounds mm -hmm. really callous, but you know what I mean? Like, oh, it, it's, it's life affirming when you go on this journey of loss with people, and, but, and you see that they're taking these bits of, of, of sweetness and growth and humor and perspective and pain from every relationship. And they're, they're evolving because of it. It's like, the whole reason why we're here. 
Yeah. And it's like you take you, like Lenny, for example, that priest took in pieces of Lenny and who she was and how she communicated and was and her being and he his life altered and then he went moved forward with some of those bits and pieces that then impacted somebody else that turned theirs and it's just like these it's almost like a mosaic of life moving forward it's you're not just one human being you're bits and pieces of those who impacted you before and yeah. I think that's like I am, I know that I am changed. I am a very different person than I was this time last year. A lot of things for the better, some things maybe not, but it's an adaption of what's happened. And also other people who were part of that, we grew together when we weren't there before. And so it's just, it's, it's so bittersweet Mm -hmm. more, uh, you know, depending on the day it's more sweet than bitter and more bitter than sweet but yeah this book was beautiful this is olivia's book club in arizona's family originals podcast thanks for listening to olivia's book club the podcast i'm your host olivia fierro our producer is margaret stewart you can send us an email with your thoughts or your book recommendations olivia's book club at azfamily.com is the address and you can check out olivia's book club on facebook or find us on Instagram, hello bookstagrammers, at olivias.bookclub, and Margaret is at overbooked and overdue. Make sure to rate and subscribe to this podcast and tell your friends. You can find us on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Amazon Music.